woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, searches carefully until she finds it. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels over God, I mean, of God over one sinner who repents. Or suppose a woman has 10 silver coins and loses one. Doesn't she light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of angels of God over one sinner who rejoices. Greetings, guys. It is me here with a message of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, guys, this particular um, parable is more or less the same with the one we just uh, spoke about in the last uh, in the last episode, right? But because, guys, we have to dig, dig, keep on digging, keep on digging, guys. We're just going to keep on digging. We're just going to keep on digging, guys. Because I've been saying that this message, guys, is very short. It is very, very, very short. You know, you you just go to people and you tell them the kingdom of heaven is near. And they were like, What do you mean? What is the kingdom? Because guys, people don't know the kingdom of heaven. They know money, earthly riches, earthly blessings, you know, prosperity, but they don't know the message that Jesus sent, the message of the kingdom of heaven. So you just tell them the kingdom of heaven is near. You understand? And they will ask you what you mean. And you will explain to them that it's what Adam lost, right? Adam lost this king, this kingdom of heaven because Adam was spiritually alive. Adam was exactly like God. God can't sin. Jesus can't sin. So Adam, because he was made in their image, he had their seed. He couldn't sin. But when he sinned, he was he was wired or designed. Human beings were not supposed to do things that God doesn't want us to do. You understand? So when Adam did that, he died spiritually. And when he died spiritually, he lost the kingdom of heaven. He lost the kingdom of God, right? Then Satan took over. It was then the beginning of the kingdom of darkness. You understand? So Jesus came down here. He brought the message of the kingdom of darkness. He brought the blood because we had to become spiritually alive. And he brought the, the book of the kingdom of heaven, which is the Bible, right? And with it are laws so that we can obey these laws after we've become spiritually alive. We will obey these laws. And once we've obeyed these laws, guys, we will remain spiritually alive. You understand? It's simple, guys. It's You are done. Then you are done. There's nothing more to say. There's nothing more to say. You understand? This message, guys, it's so simple. You don't have to create something. You don't have to plan something. You simply open the scripture, you read what Jesus says, and then you tell the people, and then you explain to them. Then you you go. It's simple. Then Jesus will continue with the work because, guys, this is Jesus' message. You understand? We are not the founders of this message. Jesus, guys, is a surety is the guarantor of this message. You understand? I've been saying that Jesus is the guarantor of this message. He sits there in heaven with daddy and oversees this message and looks down here on earth to find out if we are preaching this message that he sent us. Guys, guys, Jesus is a God. We need to know that. You know, the kingdom of heaven, guys, is not a religion. Christianity has become a religion because people who... Um, say they are say, uh, Christians, are doing exactly the same things that other people uh, who are not uh, saved are doing. You understand? And so it has lost its value. There is no value in Christianity now. Everything that is working about is, is you understand, is, is, is drinking alcohol, is, is, guys, it calls itself a Christian. Everything that, guys, whatever, Whatever, guys, you know, everyone is calling themselves Christians and no one is obeying God because they keep saying, oh, he forgives. No, Christianity is about forgiveness. Yes, that blood was given to us because Adam died spiritually and I was born spiritually dead. It wasn't my, my fault. And daddy wanted to forgive me because of this, because I was born spiritually dead. He wanted to forgive me. And he did that. When I accepted the blood of Jesus, because this uh, blood is available to everyone, you understand? It's credited to everyone, but it's up to me to accept it. And once I do, 
accept it. Then I become spiritually alive. Then I am forgiven. That's what forgiveness is all about. But once you know the truth, there no longer remains any sacrifice for sin. So people know the wrong things about salvation. Yes, people know about salvation, but they know the wrong things about salvation. Hence, people are not changing. You know, people are doing everything left, right, and center are not changing because they are told the wrong things about salvation. You know, guys, it is better uh, to have one person listening to you than to have five million people listening to you but listening to a wrong thing. Just because what you are telling them is nice to them. Oh no, it's fine. You can sin. God is going to forgive you. So they go and sin and come back and listen to you. They go and sin and come back and listen to you. No, no, it's not right. Because he himself, he said that once you know the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains sacrifice for sins, but only the expectation of hell. You'll find that in Hebrews 10, 26. And then he says, children, do not sin, but if you do sin, there is blood. Meaning you will forgive a child is one who doesn't understand yet. You'll find that in 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 First John 2. Yes, in First John 2, verse 1. You understand? So it's important, guys, to understand the truth. You understand? I always say that it's better for a person to hate me for telling them the truth than for people to love me for giving them lies. Uh-uh. I don't... Because I... W- I am after your soul. Guys, I am after your soul. That's what I'm after. You understand? I, I I don't want to speak about my experiences and the things I know. You understand? But guys, after seeing uh, a soul of a dead person, I don't want to be like that. I don't, guys. I don't want to be like that. The truth of the matter is that the things that I've seen the things that I've been shown, which I will never talk about. You know, it's not important because it's not about me. It's about it, it, it's about Jesus. It's about our Lord. It's about our master. It's about our teacher. You understand? But the things I've been shown, they make me so scared. I am so scared, guys. I'm so scared of people because I'm scared they will influence me and pressure me. I'm so scared of being around people. It's not even funny. You understand? So I don't want to be unsaved again because I know a soul of a person who is unsaved. I don't want to be like that. I, do, I don't, guys. No matter how difficult my flesh... Uh, uh, you understand, guys? You see, guys, our flesh, no, nothing happens to it when we get saved. So it still gives me problems because it wants money. It wants the things of the world. It wants riches. You know, it wants to do all these things. That's why this message of the beast is is, is very nice and people all overtakes it because it's in line with our flesh. You know, so my flesh also loves that message. You know, but because I've seen the soul of a person who is unsaved, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be like that because now since I know the truth and I'm spiritually alive now and if I disobey Jesus knowingly, now I'm going to be unsaved forever because he says once you know the truth and you sin on purpose after knowing the truth, there no longer remains sacrifice for sin. So Jesus doesn't cleanse after that. You see guys what happens because I've been explaining that Jesus is now our high priest and he went there. He says, Mary, don't touch me. I need to present the blood to the Father. I have not gone to the Father yet. So he was pres- was going to present the blood to the Father because he became our high priest, right? So Jesus sits there in heaven and performs these sacrifices, right? Whenever we sin, he, he performs these sacrifices. Otherwise, guys, the Holy Spirit will not be able to sit on us. Believe you me when I tell you, the, the Holy Spirit will not be able to sit on us because he can't sit on a sinner. When we sin, we become sinners. So if we don't know the truth, Jesus to Jesus, that innocent. If we don't know the truth to Jesus, that innocent. So he keeps performing these uh, sacrifices and the Holy Spirit is able to indwell me because he, he, he keeps performing these uh, sacrifices. The Holy Spirit is able to indwell me. But the moment I know the truth, Jesus says, no. I'm not going to cleanse her anymore. She now has to start to learn to discipline her flesh. That's why one of the fruit of the spirit is what? It's the fruit. I mean, it's the 
fruit of what? Of discipline. You have to start disciplining yourself because once Jesus says, now you are cognizant of my kingdom, now you know the truth. Therefore, you need to stop doing this. You need to stop running after this. You see, guys, I can't run after money. I can't run after the things of the world. I can't run after riches. Why? Because I know the truth. Once I do that, Jesus will not cleanse me because it is sin according to the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus will not cleanse me. You understand? And if Jesus doesn't cleanse me, then it's over with me. The Holy Spirit will have to leave because he can't live on a sinner. He can't dwell on a sinner. You understand? And Jesus is saying, uh uh-uh, now because you know the truth, Nini, I am not I am not going to cleanse you anymore. So it's over and done with with me. You understand? So for me, I do not want people to forfeit their souls. Because people think that forfeiting uh, one soul is when one becomes a devil worshipper. Guys, even a devil worshipper can become spiritually alive. Even if you know someone who is a devil worshipper, you can tell them, listen, you can become spiritually alive. Jesus' blood is available for everyone. You understand? Whatever, guys, you do in ignorance, in other words, you, you don't understand yet, you don't know. Jesus forgives those sins and he cleanses you. He's a, he is our high priest, you understand? He is our advocate. He, he, he tells daddy, Mm-mm, daddy, this one, she doesn't know yet. He doesn't know yet. And he uses his blood and he cleanses us and the Holy Spirit will remain in us. But once we know, then Jesus will no longer. And if Jesus doesn't uh, continue cleansing us, the Holy Spirit will have to depart. You understand? And that is dying. I mean, that is dying uh, spiritually and it is also forfeiting your soul. You understand? So people don't understand. Guys, I know the things of the Spirit. I've seen things of the Spirit that I I can't talk about, that I don't want to talk about. You know? So for me, I don't want people to die spiritually unknowingly because of a wrong message. No, I just want people to get the right message, no matter how harsh or hard it is, as long as they know the right message and guard against their souls. You are the only one who can guard your soul. You understand? Satan cannot kill you. Satan couldn't kill Adam. It's Adam who allowed Satan to kill him, but he couldn't. You understand? So you also, once you know the the right, the truth, then you can guard against sinning. You understand? So that you will remain spiritually alive. Guys, I care about people's souls. I care about people's souls, but there's nothing I can do. The only thing you can do for a person, guys, is give them information. You can't control them. What they do after that, you understand, is their prerogative. Let me stop here, guys, and we continue.